Hey, good morning. Happy Tuesday. We are in Genesis chapter 37. We went through 36 together yesterday. Those genealogies, good news. We're back to narrative now. We've got the story Joseph introduced to us here. We've, of course, already read of his birth, but that's all we were told about him. And so now we're going to get into the meat of Joseph's story. We'll still see Jacob, Israel pop in here and there throughout the rest of the book. But primarily our focus is going to be on the 11th son of Jacob, which is Joseph. He is the fourth patriarch in the lineage. We have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Joseph. So let's pray and we will start chapter number 37. Father, we love you and we're thankful for all that we've learned throughout these last 37 days. And we pray for more wisdom and knowledge and help us to make application, please. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's get into it. Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him, and could not speak peaceably unto him. So, we find the setting here. Jacob, he's an old man now. He is in the land of Canaan, sojourning, dwelling, and he's proud of Joseph, his son. He's the son of his old age. He's also the first son that was given to him by Rachel. And so Joseph is his favorite kid. First off, best not to have favorites. We ought to love all of our children uh, with the same love. Now, I know that they're different, and so you may love them differently. You may love them in different ways, or you may appreciate different things from them, but you can't have preferences in your kids. Jacob does. He loves Joseph more than any of the others. We know that Joseph or Jacob is prone to having favorites because he had a favorite wife. That didn't work out real well for the family either, did it? And so Joseph's a favorite. He's out keeping the flocks with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah. So these aren't the primary children, uh, of uh, of Jacob, they uh, you know they're not Reuben and Simeon and Levi. They were uh, Naphtali and and Gad. I uh, you know I I hate to now I'm playing favorites with the tribes, aren't I? These are some of the lesser known tribes, and so they come from the handmaids. And something's going on here. It says that Joseph brings to Jacob the evil report of his brothers. And so they were doing something or they were planning something. Joseph caught wind of it. And so he goes to his father and he lets him know what's going on here. Not necessarily tattling, you know, tattling is over insignificant matters and issues. Uh, but they obviously, it says evil report. So they were planning something nefarious. And Joseph believed that he needed to let Jacob know. So this is creating this storm here within the family Joseph's the favorite son. He's given this expensive gift of this coat of many colors, and now he's informing dad on what they're doing. And so they don't like Joseph at all. He is not uh, their friend, and they are not his friend. And it even says they could not speak peaceably unto him. So it's about to get worse. Verse 5, Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I wonder if Joseph is just a little naive, because he is young. He's 17 years old. God gives him this dream. Let's read the dream. Verse 6, he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about. 
and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. So Joseph has this dream that symbolically tells everyone that all the brethren are going to bow down to him. So I don't know if you'd appreciate that or not. Imagine you went to work today and all your coworkers came around and one of them said, hey, I dreamed a dream last night that uh, I was going to become all of your supervisors. And you're looking at that person and say, hey, you're just, you're one of us. What makes you think you're any better than us? And that's what happened here with Joseph and his brothers. They hate his guts. They can't stand him. They don't even like to speak kindly to him. Verse nine, another dream. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. You might think that he'd have learned the first time, but he doesn't. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. So he has eleven brothers and he's got a mother and a father, right? So this is picturing now all of his brothers and his mom and dad too, Jacob and Leah. Where are we here? Because Rachel has passed, remember? And he's told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So now he's ticked off Jacob. <laughs> Jacob's like, wait, we're, we're all going to bow down to you? It's one thing when your brothers are going to bow down. Now you're telling me me and your mom are going to bow down too? Switching the story here, time has passed, something new. Verse 12, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I. And he said to him, go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron. And he came to Shechem, and a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. So, time had passed since he explained the dreams to his brother and to Jacob, and he says, his, Jacob calls him and says, hey, I want you to go check on your brothers. They're in Shechem. And so he goes to Shechem to check on them, see how they're doing. And he doesn't find them there. But he finds an old man. And he says, hey, where are my brothers? Did you see them? Yeah, I heard them say they were going down to Dothan. And so Jacob or Joseph packs up and he starts heading toward Dothan. So I think here there's something, you know, that's not right. Jacob expects the boys to be in Shechem. Instead, they're in Dothan. This could be a part of this evil report we read about earlier in the chapter, how that Jacob's sons don't really do what they tell their father they're going to do. They do what they want to do. They're doing their own thing. And because Joseph is Jacob's favorite, he sort of sets that, him up as a spy, checking on them, overseeing them, and they don't like that at all. So, verse 18. When they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. So they're talking about killing Joseph now. They're going to actually take the life of their brother. And they said one to another, look here, behold, this dreamer cometh. Man, these guys are bitter. They're holding this in their hearts against Joseph and uh, they're conspiring to kill him. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. And cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So they said, You know what? We're going to kill this boy. We'll tell dad that a wild animal killed him, and you know, let's see what happens to his dreams after that. You know, in other words, nothing will come of them then, will they? And look here, verse uh, 21. And Reuben heard it. Reuben's the firstborn son of Jacob, he's the oldest. 
And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. So Reuben's speaking, you know, wisdom here. Hey, what do you guys think you're doing? You're going to kill Joseph? Reuben, the firstborn, he knows he's going to be held accountable by Jacob for what happened. So he's speaking up in Joseph's defense. Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So he says, hey, let's not kill him. You know, throw him into this pit. Then he'll be out of our hair. He won't be able to get out, and uh, we can just do what we need to do here without his interference. So again, maybe this plan that they have going on, for whatever reason, whatever they're trying to accomplish or benefit themselves with, and so he's trying to keep Joseph alive so he can get him home alive. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. So you get the idea that it's a well, right? And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. So now Judah speaks up and he says, You know, I'm thinking, look here, here we've got this band of, of Ishmaelites, they're think gypsies, they're a roving band of slave traders, and Judah says, hey, you know what, why don't we not kill him? What profit will we have if we kill him? Let's sell him to these guys. I mean, after all, he is our brother, we really shouldn't kill our brother. Let's sell him as a slave, and we'll, we'll profit from him, and then we'll tell dad that a wild beast has got him. And so that's what they do. Verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent to his clothes and he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? So Reuben goes to his brothers after he finds Joseph's not there anymore. And he says, Where did he go? What did you do with Joseph? And he probably fears that they killed him like they said they were going to. The good news is they hadn't killed him. But he's saying, I can't go home now. I can't go home and face dad and tell him that, that Joseph is dead. Verse 31. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it unto uh, their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And so they take Joseph's coat, they shred it all up, they kill this goat, and they put the blood of the goat all over the coat, and then they send the coat back to Jacob, their father, and he sees the coat. Yeah, this is Joseph's coat. It's covered in blood, it's shredded up, and he deduces that a wild animal has killed Joseph. Verse uh, 34. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. So Jacob here, it is very clear and obvious the degree of love that he had for Joseph. He mourns many days, and then he makes the statement, I will die still mourning the loss of Joseph. He is his favorite son. 
And now that he's lost him, his life is not worth living in his eyes. In verse 36, we know the truth. Joseph is still alive. What's happening with him? And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So these Midianites, they take Joseph and they bring him into Egypt and a man named Potiphar buys Joseph to be his slave, his servant, and he's going to put Potiphar, I'm sorry, Potiphar's going to put Joseph to work. And so that's chapter 37. Pretty interesting. We hit the ground running with Joseph, didn't we? So to recap, pardon me, Joseph is the favorite son of Jacob. It's evidenced by this gift of this coat of many colors. His brothers hate him because he's the favorite son. He has two dreams. One of sheaths that bow down to another sheath representing Joseph. Then stars that bow down to Joseph, sun and moon, mom and dad bowing down to Joseph. He's It's almost as though he's bragging about these dreams, telling them that he's going to rule over them someday. It creates great hatred between his brothers and himself. They can't even speak peaceably to him. While they're out, supposed to be in Shechem, minding the flocks of Jacob. Uh, Joseph is sent after them to check on them, to see how things are going, because these boys are usually up to no good. He gets to Shechem. The goats aren't there. The flocks aren't there. The brothers aren't there. An old man says, yeah, I thought I heard him say they're going to Dothan. So he gets to Dothan. They see him coming. They can see that coat. Everybody sees that coat. And uh, they say, behold, this dreamer cometh. Let's kill him. Reuben says, no, no, we're not going to kill him. How am I, you know, supposed to answer to dad for that? Let's throw him in a pit. He'll be out of our hair. We can do what we need to do. While Reuben's gone, the slave traders come by and Judah says, hey, we won't get any profit if we kill him. Let's just sell him off and we'll tell dad that he was killed. And so they strip him of his coat. They sell him as a slave. They take the coat then, shred it up, put blood on it, send it to dad, Jacob, and tell him, an evil beast got your boy. Jacob mourns many days. In the meantime, the slave traders go into Egypt, and Joseph now becomes the property of Potiphar, and he'll be serving Potiphar in his house. Now, so far, doesn't seem like these dreams are coming true, does it? You know, sometimes we have a vision for what God is going to do with our life, but day by day, things don't seem to be adding up. What you need to do is trust God every single day. God will do in your life what you hope he will do. He will do in your life what he promised he will do. He will do in your life what he tells you he will do. But you got to trust him. I guarantee you, when Joseph was thrown into that pit, he's probably doubting those dreams. When he then becomes sold as a slave, He's doubting those dreams. As he's drug into the nation of Egypt, he's dreading those dreams. And now he's sold again to Potiphar. And he's not thinking that anything is happening like God promised it. But the amazing thing is, and we'll see it as we go through the life of Joseph, everything that happens is exactly according to God's plan. So sometimes you got to go through the pit to get to the palace. And uh, we're going to see that through the next several days. Hey, thanks for watching with us. Uh, good chapter here this morning. I love the life of Joseph. He's one of those guys, you can't find any fault with him. Uh, I, You know, if you want to really nitpick him, 17 years old, bragging to your brothers that they'll rule you someday, uh, rule, you'll rule over them someday, maybe not the smartest thing to do. But Joseph doesn't do any wrong. He doesn't sin against God. He doesn't uh, turn his back on God. He doesn't do anybody wrong. He just does right. And God blesses his life all the way through. So I'm excited to be in this phase of the, of the book of Genesis. We've covered a lot of ground. Abraham and then Isaac and Jacob. And now we're in the life of Joseph. Hey, thanks for watching. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we'll be back in our place. Uh, please like love, share the post. It's part of the playlist here on Facebook. Uh, it's on YouTube as well. If you go to Lighthouse Baptist Church Flint, you'll find it there. Have a great Tuesday. God bless you.